Good morning and welcome to another video. In today's video, you're gonna watch me suffer. It's ramp test day. I'm heading over to Coach Ken's and Daisy's with me. She's on camera, lady duty. And as well as the ramp test, I've got a bit of an announcement to make. I'm gonna finally reveal what I'm training for. Follow the fucking training plan. Oh, I've got to do it already. This is serious business. This is serious business, mate. Yeah. No time for jokes. People keep saying in your comments, oh, Ken looks a bit grumpy. It's because this is serious shit. So we're gonna talk about this in depth after the test a little bit more, but give me a quick rundown of exactly what I'm gonna be doing on the bike now. We're looking for your lactate threshold, and to do that, we're running you through a ramp test protocol. So start off super easy, and then we change the resistance every few minutes, going up and up and up, so it's getting harder and harder to keep pedaling and we take a blood lactate sample at every intensity along the way so we can see how your body's responding to those different power outputs and so we can give you really personalized training zones off the back of that rather than just saying you've done 20 minutes of this power therefore all your zones are this as a percentage it's really personalized to you and what's going on within your body when you're riding at different intensities. What actually is lactate? Because it's <laughs> different to lactic acid, right? Yeah, so blood lactate is the byproduct of hard exercise. So it's also a fuel used in the body. So it's produced by uh, anaerobic metabolism in your fast twitch muscle fibers, which is then used by the slow twitch muscle fibers as fuel to be burnt off aerobically. So it's a breakdown of carbohydrates, the by product of that is a molecule called lactate if it's left hanging, hanging around for long enough and not taken up by the slow twitch muscle fibers it moves to different parts of the body to be burnt off essentially and that's what we're measuring because we're taking samples from your finger so we know that if lactate's moving around the body and not being used within the working muscles we're going to see it elsewhere in the body and from that we can deduce how much those different energy systems are contributing to the effort that you're putting in and we can work out a lot of stuff off the back of that and with the three minutes of that i'll take a sample towards the end of that three minutes and then we'll go at 20 watts and we keep going until you can't go anymore yeah so the test stops when you stop so it's an effort to exhaustion right at the end okay so it'll be quite nice for most of it i'm finished oh you're done yeah oh fine cool <laughs> cool didn't actually take any samples there. <laughs> So just having a little bit of a warm up now. It'll be interesting to see what my lactate threshold comes out at compared to the test or sort of test session we did last week where I did two by 20 minutes. First one was at 300 watts, second one was at 290 watts. So this may sort of show why doing a 20 minute test and then minusing 5% and saying that's your threshold is not really the best way to do it. Should have got you to do a 20 minute test as well, yeah. as well as the two by 20. Maybe next. we'll do that next week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would actually like to try and do a 20 minute effort. Yeah, I want to do a 20 minute Did you just say you want to do a 20 minute effort? I think it's quite a nice <laughs> pace to set at. Uh, uh, oh, all right. All right. It means you're not doing it hard enough. <laughs> 0.6 to yeah. start off with is great. It means you're nice and efficient at uh, low intensity. It's brilliant. still really really low okay like a normal baseline is between 1 and 1.5 so you're at a really really low lactate level but your starting point was so low that this actually is an elevated quite a lot. number okay not, not quite a lot it's still a small amount but the fact that we're seeing a higher number in the lactate shows us that there is lactate being produced and it's moving around the body. i can tell from this that you've got really good volume in your legs you've done a lot of low intensity you're, you're efficient at low intensity does that mean it's a good thing to build on Am I yeah, not in a good yeah, position yeah, to yeah, start? Yeah. Absolutely, because this is what you want to build first. Yeah. This is what you develop first, that foundation to doing all the hard work on top. And, and it's the boring bit usually. Yeah. It's the winter bit, isn't it's, it? It's the bit that doesn't hurt, so people don't like doing it. And for it to take effect, you have to do it for a really long time. Really good, mate. Oh, buddy. That was your peak lactate. 15 millimoles, so it's pretty high. Higher than last time. Yes, it is. Interesting. And it was at 20 watts higher. Last time you did a minute of 360 watts. This time you did three minutes of it, so you got to the end of the step this time. 
before you stopped, you couldn't carry on, couldn't finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your, your performance in the test has improved because you got to a further end point, if you measure it that way. But also by your power to heart rate and by your lactates, you're also much stronger than before. Okay. Um, and you can see it all the way through looking at the numbers, your lactate's really, really low all the way. And it doesn't really kick in until beyond 280 watts. So when you did your two by 20 session, yeah. It wasn't maximal efforts. We were trying to find where your maximal steady state is by forcing you to do really long intervals. Yeah. So if you do really short intervals, you can get away with a lot. A lot's hidden away in a five minute interval. But if you're doing 40 minutes worth of work, then you're kind of forced into settling on a pace that you can maintain. So you did the first one of those at 300 watts. And then without me saying anything, you backed off to 290 in the second one yeah. because that felt more sustainable you finished the first effort going, I can't do another one of those. So the second one, you backed it off by 10 watts. So just a small margin there, but in that 10 watts, you managed to complete another whole 20 minutes of effort. And that 290 watts is about where we're seeing the turn point in your ramp test today. Yeah. So at 280 watts, you're below threshold. At 300, you're above threshold. So we can see from that, and compared to your two by 20, that setting you around the 290 mark is a really good place to set that threshold. Now, that is different from your FTP. So people's definition of FTP is your maximum effort for 60 minutes. So your best 60 minute power. So at the end of that 60 minutes, you're completely empty, tanks are drained, you've gone as hard as you can. I'm not trying to find that point, I'm trying to find the point below that where you can maintain a steady state without going into the red. As soon as you give someone a maximal effort, they go as hard as they can and they use all of that anaerobic capacity. Even if they're using it really, really slowly over the course of a 60 minute effort, if you were to just sprint at the end of it, you would raise your average power. That doesn't mean your average power then is your steady state. Your steady state's below that. So and that's, this is the most accurate way That's what we're trying to find here. Um, so I call it threshold, but that is a different definition to FTP. And this test will give you a slightly lower number that what a 20 minute test minus 5% might like, because I'm not taking into account all that anaerobic work capacity I'm finding the point at which you start to go into that and then get you working just below it because that's the physiological break point that's important for your training intensities and we're going to set your training based on that rather than your maximal efforts because otherwise every session is based on your best ever performance so every day when you're training, you're trying to train at your best ever level, and it doesn't work like that. You're not always at your best every day. Some days you might be a bit tired. So if you set your zones a little bit low, you'll be way more consistent, get way more done over a long period of time, and ultimately end up at a higher performance level as a result of going easier, rather than going harder too often, which is hard for people to get their heads around. Thanks for that, Ken. Okay. That was horrendous. Don't feel when I'm doing my trousers up. <laughs> I figure some people are probably going to ask this in the comments, and I'd quite like to know as well. What would be your guess at my 20 minute max power based on the test we've just done and maybe the Zwift session from last week? I'd say your 20 minute power would come in at around 320 watts, there or thereabouts. We, we just tested your lactate threshold, your maximum steady state, at about 290 watts. Uh, but when you started to ride beyond 320, that's when we saw a real significant spike in your lactate numbers. So I'm looking at that going, that, that number that you saw at 340 watts is not sustainable for 20 minutes. Yeah. The one at 320 watts, you're right on the edge of that's probably sustainable for more than a few minutes. So I'd put your 20 minute power around 320. You could probably lift it up a little bit above that by sprinting Spring at the end, the end but yeah, probably yeah, your course. sustainable power for 20 minutes would be around that. Well, to me, that goes to show how sort of inaccurate and inconsistent the 20 minute power minus yeah. 5% thing so, is, right? So, That's a perfect so example. Did, say you did 320 watts for your 20 minutes right now. 95% of that is 304 watts. We've just tested your lactate threshold at 290. So if you were to just use the 95% rule on your 20 minute power, all your zones would be about 14, 15 watts too high. And if we're trying to get you to ride at threshold or below threshold, and all your zones are 15 watts high, you might be riding above it all the time. And then all you're doing is getting this massive contribution from that anaerobic side of things that actually we want to tune down and get a more aerobic contribution if you want to get your threshold as high as possible. 
So by having that higher number and using the 95% rule, you're more likely to overtrain, work too hard and use the wrong systems than if we measure it this way and be conservative with our estimates on your threshold power. So a much better end result. Dan Bigham's company, or Watchshop. Oh, pop them on. Get super aero. He knows the stuff about aerodynamics, doesn't he? Oh, mate, yeah. It's nerd alert. They're good, though. Good bit of kit. I haven't ridden them outside yet. I'm assuming they're faster. They probably are. What size chainring is that? 62. Nice one. Big boy gears. From Xavier and Jess. Yeah, mate. I don't think I could even push 62. Yeah, you could. Well, I could if there was like Just put a 62 on the back, on the yeah. back as well. <laughs> Finally, time to reveal to my viewers what I'm going to be training for. You already know. Yeah, I know. Vilia are entering me to Cape Epic next year, which thankfully has moved to October. Pretty much the biggest mountain bike race in the world. Eight days long, cross country bikes through the beautiful farmland of South Africa. I need to get some time on the mountain bike. It was, it was nearly going to be in March, wasn't it? Yeah. So thankfully to COVID, things have changed. Um, so we've got a little bit more time to train. I'm going to be following a plan from Ken and we're going to see well, one, how high can I get this threshold to start with. Yeah, how much fitter can you get? And then hopefully through the course of the year, there'll be some mountain bike events that you can practice your skills on. Yeah. Fitness is one element of it. Like it's an eight day stage race ultimately. So you, fitness needs to be as high as possible, but you also need the skills to be able to deliver that fitness on the terrain. So it's pretty gnarly in places. Um, Do you think I'm in a good starting place? Yeah, you are actually. Like the, the challenges and the events you've done this year have obviously set you up with a real good foundation of fitness. Um, I want to get you to do more hard stuff. More hard sessions that you wouldn't choose to do on your own. We're trying to get your VO2 max up, okay. more importantly, because your threshold is really close to your VO2 max at the minute. So we want to lift the, the top end, lift the ceiling. So, a bit of ceiling so that your it? yeah, so that your threshold can get to a to the same percentage of your VO2 max, but if your VO2 max is higher then ultimately your threshold has the possibility to be higher as well. So I'm going to be doing some pretty hard sessions in the winter. Yep. Traditional periodization would say just keep doing base all winter and then eventually move towards your, your peak fitness as you get close to your event. And that, yeah. that is fine. I totally get that. But if you're coming from a point right now where your base fitness is really, really good and it's probably not going to get all that much better, then we need to shift in order to keep your numbers moving up because ultimately you just want to see some progress each month. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the never ending winter and always be base training until right before your event. I think it's okay to work on improving your VO2 max like really quite far out from your event depending on what your current training status is. It's more about that than it is about just following traditional periodization like base build, specialty, whatever. Obviously we need to get it more specific to your event as we get closer, but it's a long way off now. So we need to get you into as good a physical shape as possible throughout the next what, 10 months. Sounds painful. Yeah, it's not gonna be fun. It wouldn't be stuff you choose to do if you didn't have someone telling you to do it. <laughs> so to conclude today's video, I'm racing the Cape Epic in 10 months time. Ken is gonna be helping me with some coaching. We're setting my training zones based on a lactate threshold of 290 watts. I'm about 67 kilos at the moment, so I've got some weight to lose. Bearing in mind back when I was racing, I was 59.60. And it will be interesting to see how close I can get to my old numbers in terms of power as well. If you would like to hire Ken as a coach, he's available. I'm gonna put a link down below to his website. And if you're being coached already, but you just wanted a lactate test from him, uh, he offers that in isolation as well. He's based just north of London, so quite easy to get to from town. And you can have the same test that I had today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and put any questions in the comment section down below, and I'm sure Ken will do his best to answer them. See you guys soon.